fourth instrument for our weather station is an anemometer. Now an anemometer is used for measuring wind speed. Now our anemometer is going to be very simple and as a result it's probably not going to be as accurate or as easy to read as ones that you can buy in the shops. But it's certainly going to cost a lot less. Because in terms of materials what we need is a piece of card. Now this is just part of an old cereal box. We need some cotton. We need a protractor. We need a ping pong ball. We need, uh, well I, actually I've got here a bubble from a spirit level. Uh, you don't have to use one of these, you can just use a small spirit level and you can buy a small spirit level from a hardware store for maybe £3, something like that. Just buying the bubble um, costs maybe 50p and you can get these online if, if you want to do that. Uh, I've also got a piece of wood, um, but this isn't essential, this is optional, it just makes the anemometer a bit easier to hold. In terms of tools, you're going to need a hot glue gun, a ruler, pair of scissors, I've also got a sharpie pen or a pencil will do fine for this and you will need either a small drill or a compass for poking holes in the ping pong ball and again you may need some adult assistance with that if you are a bit on the young side. Right the first step in building an anemometer is to get the protractor, a pencil, or I've got a sharpie pen here, a marker pen, um, and then just draw around it like so so you've got the outline of the protractor now the next thing you need to do is draw a rectangle above this and the rectangle needs to be about five centimeters tall and obviously the same width as the protractor so you should end up if you're incredibly skilled as I obviously am, with a shape like this. Now the next thing you need to do is cut that shape out. A decent pair of scissors and you can do this in just a few seconds. Right, once you've cut out a piece of card, and it took me a little bit longer than a few seconds, but I got there in the end. Once you've cut out the piece of card, your protractor should fit nicely onto the bottom like that. So check that it does, and then I'm actually going to use a hot glue gun, but you don't need to use a hot glue gun, you can just use sellotape, and in fact it'll make it easier to take the protractor off again if you want to use it for something else. So I just put some glue on very quickly, and with a hot glue gun you do have to work quite fast and I press my protractor down until the glue is set and then we end up with something like that. Right, now what you need to do is cut yourself a piece of cotton about 40 centimetres long, something like that, and the cotton, it's easiest if you lick the end, needs to go through the hole one of the holes in the ping pong ball like that. Now, if you've got loads of time and you want to use tape, the best thing to do is to get the cotton to go in one hole and come out the other hole. Now that's really quite tricky to do, um, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. And I, because I'm using a hot glue gun, I'm just going to put a blob of hot glue on the top of the ping pong ball like that. And once it's set, it should hold the cotton in there perfectly all right without needing to go through to the other side. Just put a bit more on. There we go. Fantastic. So we'll just leave that for a little while to, to set. Once the cotton has set, and it dangles quite nicely like that from the ping pong ball, you need to measure the cotton so that you've got about 15 centimetres from the top of the ping pong ball to the cotton, the top of the cotton there. And the 15 centimetre mark, you need to then stick the cotton onto the protractor. Now again, I'm going to do this with a hot glue gun, uh, but tape will do just as well. and then we'll just let it set for a few minutes before we trim it off. 
Right, once the glue has set, you can just trim the excess cotton off there and you're left with something that looks like that. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Now, you can now do things a couple of different ways. If you want to put a handle on this, you use a piece of wood and a hot glue gun just to fix it on like so. If you don't want to put a handle on it, you need to stick on your spirit level bubble or your spirit level itself, if you're using a small spirit level, to the top of the piece of card. So the way you do this is you arrange this so that your ping pong ball string is hanging 90 degrees down. Now this is where it helps to have a partner. While the string is hanging 90 degrees down, you put your spirit level bubble onto the card so that the bubble is actually in the centre between the two lines and then you fix it with your hot glue gun. Um, now if you're going to use a handle, which I am, the easiest way of doing this is to put the spirit level or the bubble that you're using onto the piece of wood first. So again, hot glue works well, but you can do this with tape if you'd rather. So I'm just going to put a bit of hot glue onto the wood, and then I'm just going to stick the bubble into the hot glue like that. Now once again, we want to wait a few seconds for it to uh, actually kind of set a bit. And then we put a bit more hot glue down the side of the stick. We hold our anemometer so the string is at 90 degrees. And we get our bubble so that it's exactly in the middle of those two lines. And then we stick our card on like so. Right. And there is our finished anemometer. Now before we go out and use it, there are a few things you need to think about. If you're measuring wind speed, you really need to be facing into the wind. So to do that, you need to go to the point where you put your uh, weather vane, because this will tell you which way the wind is blowing. So you need to be facing into the wind. Now the faster the wind blows, the more it's going to blow on the ping pong ball and change the angle of the string. So the angle we measure on the protractor here is a measure of the speed of the wind. If the wind isn't blowing much, the angle is going to be down here. If the wind is blowing strongly, it's going to be up here. Now, you need to find a nice open space. If you're too close to buildings, trees and things like that, you're going to get a lot of turbulence. It's going to be very blustery and this is just going to keep swinging around. So you need to get it nice and steady. You are going to need to work with a partner because one of you will need to hold the anemometer and make sure the bubble up the top here is between the two lines so that this is straight. Um, and the other one is going to need to read off the angle that this is making when you face into the wind. Now, at the end of this video, there is a, uh, a, a shot of a table which will tell you all the different angles and the wind speed that they represent. So what you need to do is when you get to that point, in the video is just pause it and then just copy down the different um, numbers. Okay, so there we go, that's your anemometer. Now the thing is, once you've built it, is go and use it.